all of the all of the original houses at Harmony were built to Federal Energy Star standards set by the EPA. Uh, it was a requirement that the developer placed upon them. Uh, this one coming up here, this uh, cream colored one, is a little bit different. This is a net zero house where it produces as much electricity during the course of the year as it consumes. Um, so it's up for sale at the moment and it would be a great buy. It doesn't look any weirder than any other house or, or any different, but it's uh, very energy efficient and uh, would make a great place for somebody. You'll also see that all the houses have a porch of some kind or, or another, a place to sit out front. Uh, we saw that as important and part of the, uh, the, the community building aspect of residential construction. A place to sit and greet neighbors, a kind of a semi-public place uh, where you're on your own yard, but you can also greet people that come by and works pretty well. As we turn into this neighborhood, um, you can see a little pocket park. Each neighborhood has a park of some sort. In fact, every house is within a three minute walk of some kind of open space, whether it's as small as this or some natural preserve areas. But it gives you an opportunity if you're, if you need a little bit extra room for, for some yard play uh, or just a place to come and sit and maybe greet your your neighbors read the paper on a Sunday morning then you've got this just a short distance away from your home. This neighborhood also is served by alleys. So again you can see the uh, the setup here with garage access off the, the rear of the house. Uh, mail is delivered here. Trash is collected back here. Uh, your utilities all come in the back alley. But yet there's some space that you can do something in your backyard if you like. Uh, some folks have got it fenced off right to the back. Others have got an open area. Uh, but it's, uh, it's an alley. Uh, and the lighting is the same here. It's all uh, wall mounted. There are no street lights. Another thing you'll notice is that there's a mix of houses in, uh, in this neighborhood. Are on cup seed uh, right now. You can see there are some bigger houses and smaller houses, so there's an economic diversity uh, in, in housing types here. Harmony doesn't have any gated neighborhoods at the present time, uh, so it, it really is an open community in that respect as well. Uh, cup seed in particular is convenient to the community school which is right across the street it has act activities going on after school hours and of course during school it's a bustling place you notice the street lights over here are, are fully shielded just as they are everywhere else uh, they had an outdoor pavilion there and then up on the corner is a uh, covered play area, a little playground um, with uh, sun shields on it so it can be used, boy, even after hours. And that brings us back to Lakeshore Park, Schoolhouse Road, and the Bathhouse. front of the school um, is here on Schoolhouse Road and uh, the school itself was designed so that community functions could occur in after hours using the building as a community building and not interfere with the classroom space uh, so it could be separated that way. One of the challenges, you can see the drop-off area here, and uh, uh, the buses come through here, but a lot of the cars go in the back on, the, on Cup Seed, where we just were, which created a, 
bit of a conflict for folks who wanted their children to walk to school. And the great thing about Harmony is you can walk to school from kindergarten through 12th grade without crossing a, a busy street. Uh, but nonetheless, even on the side streets, the traffic was getting a little bit too much for for youngsters on bikes and on foot to uh, to traverse. So we installed Dog Trot Trail. This is on top of the natural gas pipeline, and it was a uh, a natural corridor that leads from the school over to the main dog park and uh, connects the neighborhoods together that way. Just zip down here through the woods for a minute. The pipeline itself is at 10, 15 feet below us, so it's well protected from any kind of surface activities. And, and uh, even a leak would be very safe, I think, at this point. Although it's, uh, it's checked regularly uh, by cameras that pass through the pipe to look. All they do is look for uh, corrosion and other flaws in the, in the pipe itself. Once you get back out into the open, it's still on the pipeline. Uh, we've got a wildflower area alongside uh, Dog Trot Trail, which also passes behind another stormwater pond, which has turned into a great fishing location, and the schoolyard beyond it. Because this is so close, it provides an opportunity for outdoor classrooms. Uh, that's still yet to be developed and, and reach its maximum, but uh, uh, this, the path, the pond, in fact, if we went over to the right-hand side, we've even got another pond. Uh, it's got a more natural edge to it, um, and then woods beyond that. So there's a lot of stuff going on here that could be of real uh, enriching to classroom instruction. As we move further along the trail, And uh, it's used by big dogs. And I see one of our longtime residents, Carol Castle, out there with her two dogs today. Carol is big, and, and her husband Dave are big on the uh, uh, dog interaction scene and installed this little storage shed here where they keep agility equipment for clinics and classes and, and such. Each dog park has a fenced-in entry area, kind of the, the airlock that you have to pass through where you can take your dog on and off leash. And brings us now to the, the center of activity here at the dog park. Uh, we, we've got a small playground and uh, over in the, to the right there you'll see a dog washing station where you can wash your dog instead of in the family bathtub. Um, and it has one of the drinking fountains with the, uh, the lower bowl. It's also a community bulletin board and in the background is a pavilion. Uh, the folks can just simply hang out. It's a little early yet, but um, after dinner or later, later this afternoon, it's a real popular spot for just for community gatherings. So it, it serves as a great uh, social center for, for the neighborhoods. Just make our way around the edge of the park. The turf is held up remarkably well. It is irrigated, but it gets a lot of wear and uh, it really isn't a problem. We've got a little chess board here in case you'd like to play checkers or chess. We're all on top of the pipeline again, so it's kind of uh, public use of a space that wouldn't have any other purpose except for utility transmission. And it's punctuated up front uh, along Capriar Trail by this sculpture uh, that shows a, uh, a fallen tree. Um, in fact, it was so lifelike that in the beginning people were asking when we were going to clean up the dead tree here. And that takes us back out to the golf course. This is one of the newer neighborhood parks. Uh, the houses here front directly on the park. 
and uh, there's been some complaints actually because it seems to be getting overused. Uh, you can see that with a playground was put in to kind of give the kids something to play on, but the great thing I think is this open space which is not level, was not designed as a play field, it's more of a, a drainage swale, is all worn out. The turf is worn away from all the play that it's been getting. So, uh, and as we can see here, the uh, afternoons are continue to be a busy, uh, busy thing with informal activity, and nobody on the play structure, which is a beautiful thing. Kind of a work of art in its own right are the butterfly benches. We've got several of them around town. Uh, it's a functional place to sit. But it's also kind of fun just to uh, be wrapped in the, in the wings of a butterfly.